Uh, good morning, everyone. This is, uh, I'm calling the me meeting of the Finance Committee to order on Thursday, on Friday, November 15th. Um, this will be a remote meeting, um, no in-person uh, public access to this meeting, but members of the public may attend virtually via Zoom or by phone, and we make every effort to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to uh, sit in on these meetings. Um, because we are meeting remotely, I wanna go around the room and just make sure everyone can hear me and can be heard. Uh, Councillor Haneke? Present. Andy? Present. Uh, Kathy? I'm here. Alicia? Here. Bernie? Present. And Tom? Present. Okay. That's good. We're all here. Uh, everyone uh, is uh, available to us, or we can hear everyone. So I'm going to start uh, with public comment. If there's anyone in the audience who wishes to make a public comment, please uh, raise your hand. Okay, I, I see uh, Deb Leonard and Maria Kopiki. Anyone else? Uh, Arlie? Okay, so uh, I think we can uh, we can uh, go for three minutes on public comment. So uh, you want to bring uh, Deb Leonard in for the for a comment? Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Um, if you folks are planning on voting on the uh, the recommendation for the supplemental budget appropriation requests. Um, I would like to provide a context of um, considering delaying <laughs> those recommendations until after the public forum on those recommendations. I know that's not past practice, but you're um, dealing with a large amount of surplus and the public has not had much of an opportunity to wrap their minds around that. I believe that was first made available uh, uh, mere two weeks ago on in the in the packet. So I would strongly urge you, especially given the context of the conversations re revolving a relatively small amount of money compared to the the surplus um, for the uh, regional school committee request um, and and the conversation around <clears throat> the availability of those funds, I, I think there's a bit of a mismatch that I would like to see. Uh, resolved better in public before these appropriations were made, or at least recommended and, and made. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Deb. Uh, Maria, uh, would you bring Maria into the meeting, please? Go ahead, Maria. Thank you, Maria Kapicki, South Amherst. So since this committee, and indeed, Nobody at the town council has publicly discussed anything about the Jones Library building project since earlier this year uh, when <clears throat> there was a vote that just barely failed to uh, not allow this project to continue. Um, and that was at a time when this committee and the town council had not been made aware of the loss of $2 million of historic tax credits. I don't know what you guys are aware of, honestly, but... Here's a piece of information. The Massachusetts Historic Commission wrote a letter on November 1st that notified the town that it had not been invited to the listening session about the Section 106 process. They were not notified of the time and place of that meeting, and therefore they couldn't attend. Uh, they also noted in that uh, letter that they required alternatives to what was presented out of that Section 106 process. A lot hasn't been discussed besides that. There has not been a discussion of the impact on the debt service, the cash flow analysis, which is kind of ridiculous at this point, uh, given that the $2 million that the library was supposed to hand over in January of this year is now going to be followed by $4 million that was to be handed over in January of next year. Um, and what the impact of all this is. Um, the 
capital campaign of the library trustees have ceased providing information on uh, expenses for fundraising, and it's impossible to get any records of what they have allegedly raised and spent uh, for several months now. Uh, <clears throat> You guys have to stop abdicating your responsibility. The Finance Committee has a charge to advise the town council and the town on financial matters and the financial health of the town to review and re recommend, uh, make recommendations on borrowing and debt. <clears throat> and you haven't had a meeting. You haven't produced, you haven't gotten this information. You, you had a meeting a couple months ago where there was a, a excuse me, where there was a ridiculous, uh, there was no information uh, and the town manager, the OPM and, not, and the library people didn't even attend your meeting. And then you had another meeting which was then canceled. So I would like to know when and if the finance committee is intending to do your job. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. I just want to note that Matt has joined us. Matt, uh, can you hear us? Hi, Bob. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, one more commenter, Arlie. Could you bring Arlie in, please? Go ahead. Um. Hi. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Um. It's. I'm saying sort of the same thing as Maria, but from a different angle. I guess I keep reading or hearing a couple times now, the town manager telling the town council, now I know this isn't the council, but there are counselors here, that, you know, this is not your business. Um, you know, it's, you don't have authority to be weighing in on this. Um, and I don't really understand that because, you know, the town is giving one third of the payment to pay for this project. The MBLC is also giving one third and they seem to be able to freely give any opinions and advice that they want. Um, and in fact are running the show. But that saying, he who pays the piper calls the tune. You know, the town is paying the piper, you know, it's, it is within the finance committee, the town council to be weighing in about what this project means in terms of the financial risk to the town. Um, I, I wish that you, you know, could step up and make a motion and take a vote. And even if it, you know, in my preference, you know, would, say enough already, but even if it didn't, we would know where counselors stand on these issues of if it goes over. This um, bid came in just a few hundred thousand dollars under the cost, one change order and we're over. Who's paying for that? These discussions need to be had among the town council, the finance committee, the public, because the the fan, the financial sort of viability of this project feels very risky, unstable, and the town council seems to be being told just sit down and be quiet, you know, and and then they turn around and say, okay, open your wallet now. We need more money. I think the town council has the right, and the finance committee has the right to weigh in. You're paying a lot of money. We are. Please do so. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, does anyone else in the audience uh, wish to make a public comment? I don't see any more hands. Um, so I think I'll just close the public comment period then. And we'll move on to the next step in the agenda, which is the bud budget guidelines. And um, we, we have a lot to talk about with, with respect to the budget guidelines. Um, I would like to start with Councillor Haneke because she made an observation that uh, perhaps we're not um, we're, we're, we're not being fair to the, the regional schools 
uh, in terms of how we calculate, um, the, how we do our build up our budgets. And so, Councilor Hamicky, if you want to just, you know, kind of present um, your 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 findings or your opinions. Thank um, you. Sure, but I did some more research and were more number figuring out in relation to this, and and I've come up with different ideas. Um, but I I had wrote um, Paul and our finance director and copied Bob on it because um, when I looked at our re revenue sheets and our expense sheets, I was curious, our expense sheets are split into, um, if you think of the, the expenditure side, it's split into operating budget, capital budget, uh, miscellaneous and unappropriated uses. Um, most unappropriated uses are direct offsets from something on the revenue side. Um, the capital goes to support the debt exclusion and other ta not tax funded capital is also offset on a revenue side. The rest of capital goes to help fund all four main um, core function areas. And that's how I'll refer to the town the elementary schools, the regional schools and the Jones library as the four functional areas. Um, and, but then there was this miscellaneous section and I had looked at that and, and was thinking, and I think Kathy had touched on this at a council meeting, a couple council meetings ago that the retirement system number of, in the projection of eight and a half million and the OPEB don't, are, are numbers that are expenses on, I think three of the four functional areas. But again, I, I'm, I'm unclear on this, but it's definitely not an expense on the regional school district because they have their own retirement system and retirement assessments and other post-employment benefits that they pay out of their own budget, not our assessment. And so I was curious, um, given the, the percentage increase in that is 11% this year, like is that, when when we're pulling that out before we distribute the remaining revenues to the four um, functional areas in the operating budgets, is that does that mean given that that increase is well above three percent, does that mean that that we are essentially um, adding operating revenues to the non-region budgets to help them weather that? more than 3% increase that the region doesn't get help in weathering. So that that's that's that was the email I wrote um and and did some calculations just with that and it seemed like that might be a 1% potential um benefit to the three operating functional areas that are not the region. But then I started looking at the revenue side and there are revenues that as I said are directly offset um, buy things on the expense side, but there are also revenues that really are revenues generated for town only um, expenses, if you think of it that way. Um, the enterprise fund reimbursements go to, should are, are meant to reimburse the town line of those four functional areas for town um, operations that are done in benefit for the enterprise funds, um, but they go into this overall number. The departmental revenue, the licenses and permits um, all go into, are, are all generated by town, not regional or elementary or even library um, numbers, uh, but they go into the full number. So yesterday I spent a lot of time, and then there's all the state aid and there's offsets for state aid. The special assessment number actually offsets state aid um, assessments uh, with PVTA assessments and all of that. And so I did a lot of other sort of trying to figure out of the revenue side, what is sort of attributable to various things and where should things come out with and what, what money is left to distribute to the four functional areas. And then as I got thinking, I said, well, the region doesn't have its uh, chapter 70 money. That's outside of the the four functional areas budgets because that's part of not the assessment. So if you think of the four functional areas as being assessments, well, chapter 70 within this revenue and UGA within this revenue are, are outside of those operating budget lines on the expense side in theory, if we're trying to keep treat the region and the school district, the Amherst district and the town and the libraries sort of equivalent, um, none of those numbers should go into distributing the pot to the operating budget. 
Um, long story short in what I did, and I'd love to hear Melissa's thoughts on some of this, is I, I in playing with all these numbers, I determined that of the operating budget to the four areas, 7 million of it is actually not covered by what I would call expenses that should be shared by all four areas and distributed to all four areas. In fact, 7 million of it is pulled and paid for out of our chapter 70 and um, UGA, basically state aid numbers that gets distributed amongst all four areas. So in that sense, Yes, there might be some oddities here with how the expenditures and the revenues get distributed on, but at the same time, the region is actually benefiting from the state aid numbers that are coming in for the general government and the local elementary school in addition to the state aid they get. So I don't know what to take away from that because <laughs> it gets really complicated and I'm sure Melissa and Paul have some things, but I. I think we need to have a conversation outside of how we look at these numbers on what is the best way to 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 figure out the increases on the operating side every year. Um, but that those state aid numbers actually fully cover the um, the what was called the the OPEB and retirement systems, the miscellaneous. The state aid numbers are well higher than eight and a half million, in, including the the town state aid number is over ten million. Um, so even if that is only for the town, the town state aid number covers that completely um, is another way to think about it. And since the region's state aid is outside of these four functional operating budgets areas, if you think about the town state aid being outside of it, the fact that it covers completely the miscellaneous line kind of makes a wash of what I had ri written to Melissa and Paul and Bob. So do you, do you want me to comment on that? Sure. Um, so I, I I appreciate all the work that you've done, Councillor Haneke, and I, I, you're right, it is um, complicated. Um, and I think another thing that I'm not sure where you came up with your 7 million, but part of the part of the reason that we we design these things this way is it's, you know, this is, um, you know, sort of um, the, like we're we're told we're we're regulated by the state on how we uh, attribute certain funds, and so if you want to, um, I think that there was a conversation a few years ago about how we used to attribute some of the um, expenses of the school directly to the school, and then we were told by the state we couldn't do that anymore. And, and specifically, there are two very large assessments, choice and charter out, that are required under municipal guidelines to be included as part of the overall town budget and town, um, you know, when you when you look at schools. So I, I understand that the region has their own um, choiter, choice and charter out, but we also have choice and charter out for the elementary schools, which is part of that overall um, unappropriated expenses along with the uh, also very large um, regional transportation that, that those are the drivers in that in that that un, unappropriate association so we don't report that as school um, money it's part of the overall pot and then it's netted from the the UGA and chapter 70 and and then just and then the town and the school um, pay that because we are in the state's mind, one organization as far as the elementary schools and in the town. Um, so there are, and then, the, you know, there are the offsets, which those are funds that look like revenue on the cherry sheet that go directly to the school and directly support their um, budget, but do are not shown as operating budget because they're put in a special revenue um, to supplement for a purpose, uh, school departments. So. It kind of all, it, it was the most fair way, I think, that the reason that we did it this way, um, you could certainly, um, it, it would, I, I mean, and we also report it th that way um, because those are the categories under the municipal um, accounting rules that we have to report funds. So, so that's why we separate it into those categories. Those categories are 
is sort of dictated by municipal finance. So we can certainly look at and, uh, uh, you know, you guys can make a determination about whether or not you want to more heavily weight one organization over another. That's that's a decision for you all, but I don't think that um, I don't think that the mechanism that we're using is unfair or, or or that we should change it. I think if you want to make decisions about how you weight um, certain organizations over the over another, that is a that's a policy decision for this board. Uh, Paul, did you want to speak on this? Yes, if I can just if I can um, just to build on Melissa. So I think Mandy Joe's right. If you look at it, one of these things is not like the others, right? It's if we look at the Richard Scary book, um, the um, so this the regional school district is like a town. It's not like another department in the town, and it's treated it's looked at differently. The funds that go to it are established by the um, regional agreement that the ta that the four towns agree to. Um, the region retains the state aid that it gets. And so I think one of the questions you were saying is like, why is it why is it the region the one sort of suffering? It seems like, I think one of the questions. And I think the reason is that when we look at say a 3% increase for the budget, we do a 3% increase on our contribution to the region. The region gets half of its money from the state and that's flat. So they are suffering because they're not getting an increase from the state that, to, that supports half of their budget. So a 4% increase from the town can translate to be less than that overall. I think that's the case. I mean, I'm just, just as we think this through. So I think that that's, it's, it's a, it's a, and then we, we look at why was this, was this model we which we've been using for it. Andy would know it's, you know, decades. I mean, do we want to, turn it around or do look at it differently. I think that's a valuable conversation to have um, because we look at this from a town's perspective in terms of our town budget for all the entities that we have to meet and how do we support that. Um, you're right that some of the rev this, these revenues are shared and some aren't. Um, the, the school tends to retain its, its you know, um, the, if charter, charter, we all support the charter changes. Um, the school in by itself does not absorb that. Um, so I think that that's the, the, the key thing here is that um, when we think of the region, I, I think it's easy to think about the, the elementary school because it's, it's all of a part of a piece with the rest of the other uh, two entities. The region's just a different animal. Okay, Kathy. <clears throat> So I have two, I'll try to stay on this topic, but I want to open up another one. And I'm also conscious we don't have that much time between now and when we need to have a draft guideline document. Um, so I think changing a basic accounting system right now is complex and not worth it um, because we've got a larger set of issues before us. Um, so, so the, the, you know, if you look at what's going on with state aid, it was one of the things I asked, and then Melissa gave me the underlying data. The state aid on one line, which looks like a big receipt, is being subtracted off by an assessment. And if you take it just for education, so state aid comes in in multiple pieces. Um, I went back and our state education aid is flat, not flat for inflation, but flat <laughs> for a five-year period and really minimalistic. And it's because of a big assessment for the charter schools. And the charter school assessment is driven by whatever our schools spend on their kids, our kids. So if our costs go up and the per child thing, the tuition goes up. It's an automatic, there is no control. It doesn't reflect the costs of the charter schools themselves. It's So when Northampton digs deeply into its reserves to put more money into schools, more money goes to the charter. It's just a take the average and send it out. So if you do that computation on what Paul just said about regional, if you do it for the region, you get the same 
state aid is not keeping up with the costs and particularly not keeping up with the costs if you subtract out what's being taken away from the education piece that's coming from the state. So we work really hard on getting more chapter 70 money and then another hand is taking it away. So I think that is all underneath all these budgets. I think we still have to come up with budget guidelines. <laughs> and I, I was coming into this meeting looking at the last document that we did a year ago and then Bob updated key pieces, just the dates and, and what we're talking about. I'm prepared to, to talk about not giving equal increases this year to giving the schools something more and not giving less to the other two and trying to figure out where in our revenues and our expenses, we have enough money to do that and still produce a balanced budget. So that's what I would, if we can get to that point, what I'd like to talk about today, because I think underneath the municipal services, when we say let's do be efficient, look at departments that may not be working well, there's some potential savings over several years. OPEB, Andy, you, Mandy, you flagged. That's a policy decision. We we can and have in the past send less. Um, we're doing something unusual in what we do every year, and so there are a few different places where I think um, we could talk about. That And then, Bob, the opening line in our guidelines has always been, we accept the pro projections um, of revenue. And when we look at fourth quarter and the last several years, so we've got fourth quarter on this agenda, we're low on projections of revenues consistently in a couple places. And I just went back and looked. Um, we're not even putting in the same excise tax revenue that we got three years ago, less, let alone what we got a year ago. So I wanted to talk about where are we being too conservative without, without um, causing Paul and Melissa and everyone who ha is accountable, we can't run a deficit, uh, pits in their stomachs. Um, but where we can really see that we're low and we're low for a reason and we're being too conservative on the revenue side. I don't think we're too conservative on the expense side with, with one exception. So, so I don't know how to, to ease our way into that because to come up with something more for the schools, like something more than 3%, um, I need to know where we can say the revenue projection can with high confidence be higher so there's more money coming in. Um, so that's, I'll just stop right there because that's, those are two big pieces. It's a focus on those revenue pr projections and what we just saw in the fourth quarter report. And what I'm doing about fourth quarter, that's a whole year. And if you go back a year, you can see the same things a year ago that we're, we're, we've been consistently low on a couple lines on the revenue side. Um, and so the last thing I just want to end with, I did do public finance way back in some graduate thing. And I believe that the public sector needs to be conservative on revenues, which is, means be a little lower than you hope for, and conservative on our expenses because we can't run a deficit. But I think there's a point at which we might be, particularly on revenues, being too conservative. So I'd like to move to that. Um, although I know what Mandy is asking for is rethinking the way we present these budgets. Um, so so that's where I was hoping we'd start on. And I do want to just ask Bob, we left open the discussion of voting on the recommended uses of some of the uh, free cash, um, except for Mandy's wanting to somehow fund part of a charter commission out of this. And then we were told by the town manager, he's got enough money to, to figure out what that is and to fund it. We don't have to do it now. And then I saw that uh, TSO came up with, they didn't think they needed that much on trash hauler. So I don't know whether we can move that off our plate and do a recommendation or whether we just wanna wait for the hearing. But I'd like to focus most of today's meeting on the guidelines in conjunction with the fourth quarter report. And I'll stop there. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Haneke? 
So I want to clear up, I'm not asking us to rethink how we do budgeting in that sense. Um, I was trying to answer some of my own questions in, in doing it um, to figure out were we shortchanging one over another. And I've come away with all of that saying, no, I don't think we are with this method and how things are presented. Um, but but yeah, no, I, I want to focus on the guidelines too. Um, Kathy's focus, I think, is right. Um, I think there's a couple of revenue projections that that we could make recommendations on to be a little less conservative on. Um, I noticed that our guidelines are don't talk talk about uh, the enterprise funds at all, and I'd like to add a section in enterprise funds, um, partially because the Q4s for the enterprise funds were concerning for me for one of them. Um, and so I'd like to talk about that too. I also want to talk about these financial, these budget, this bu budget guideline document, I would like to see shortened, um, not repetitive, and actually clear on the quote recommendations we are making. There are a lot, I mean, it's 14 pages of dense text, much of which is not guidelines at all. Um, much of which talks about past votes we've had that have nothing to do with the next year's budget um, or past past things we've done that, again, don't have anything to do with the FY26 budget. So I actually took a hack to this um, and, and got it down to seven pages, um, which is still a lot. Um, and I'd like to see it go even farther. And I'd like the executive summary to actually be a summary of our recommendations, not a summary of a, I don't even know. It's not. It's it's sort of an amalgam of twenty different things. I'd like to see some bullet points that say we recommend. And I'm just because we haven't made these recommendations yet. Ten and a half percent of the tax levy to go to capital, even even increases around the operating budget or whatever. You know, like that. Here are the six things we recommend. We recommend that revenue projections be a little less conservative in these five areas or on these five lines or something like actually be very clear about what those recommendations are. Because when we go to review the budget, I had to read 14 pages of dense text that I couldn't even figure out what really the recommendations to the manager were to see if he presented a budget that met those recommendations. So we've got bullet points. We can actually compare what he presents us later to what we recommended in our and gave him as guidelines here. Thank you. I, I actually agree. We need to make the the um, the report shorter and more to the point. But Andy, yeah, I was uh, just going to uh, follow up on what Kathy had said previously. Um, I think we need to recognize also that. There's an historical piece that goes year for year when you if you've been involved in this long enough or follow it long enough, and that is that we usually end up, or we let me end up. We usually start with projections that show a deficit. There's no exception. If you look at this year's bottom line, it's a three hundred thousand dollar deficit. And one of the things that we do is to recognize that revenue has a lot of categories that um, are really uncertain and we don't know what's going to happen during the year. And some will come up more than others um, that the revenue, uh, you, you can't predict with certainty which revenue line is going to be the one that uh, may uh come in higher, but we usually um, take a deep breath and say, every year the revenue um, projections work out to um, take care of the deficit and by May uh, we'll have better numbers and we're in a position to have a balanced budget. Um, so, you know, that that is how we have uh, been able to start out a process showing a deficit, but not end up having to adopt a budget that is a deficit. So if we start out by cutting uh, revenue projections, we may be putting ourselves in a hole uh, by the time we are actually adopting a budget, and that would not be sound. Okay, thanks. Uh, Athena, did you want to? Well, 
quick update because it was mentioned um and then i know it was it was mentioned at the last meeting too about the charter review committee um need for funds they talked about it last night they're going to put together a request that will go to the town manager once they have an idea of what they need and would like to do um they're still kind of figuring out their process and uh bernie can talk about this a little bit too um what they think they'll need in terms of a consultant if they want to do any printing and advertising and so forth so they're going to put together a budget and to submit that to the town manager for an appropriation request so um i hope that's not um we don't need anything from the council at this point and they are clear on how that request process works and um so so we don't need to consider that as part of these appropriation requests but thank you for thinking of it kathy uh, I just want to echo my strong support of cutting the length of the document. I started to mark it up the same way. And last year, we were really pressed for time because we had the rental bylaw. We had four other things. We were barely squeezing out stuff. So we did the simplest thing. And and I think shifting to I'm anyone who's been on other committees with me, I love executive summaries that say something, that if you stopped, you would know what the main recommendations were, and then you can read on um, and pushing. So Andy, I don't know whether maybe I misspoke. I was talking about increasing our revenue projections, not decreasing them. Um, so yes, I do not want to produce a deficit. I want to really scrutinize those. And I, it, it, I'm flagging this because there's a line in the current draft from Pat previous, we just accept what we just saw a week ago. And I think we should question a few of them. And um, so I'll leave there. So I don't know how to structure this conversation um, because one of the things I had Bob ask for, and I'm sure Melissa will get it to you. I wanted to have the spreadsheet with the revenues in an Excel format and expenses in Excel. So when I say something more for schools, I wanted to make sure the math worked and I can't do it easily with what I have right now. Um, so for us to even hone in on what she's talking about and where she getting money for. The, the last thing, and I see Paul hand up, so I'll try to be short. I did wanna open up the 10.5 for capital. Um, I looked at uh, the capital plan for the next five years. And I realized, again, last year, this last year, this calendar year of 2024 was unusual because we did not have a financial director and we were we were racing. Bob was on the committee with me. So we didn't really look hard at the next four years in the capital plan. And some things got onto it that probably not are of the highest urgency. Um, and maybe other things never made it on. Um, there's nothing. So I just wanted to open up, could we live with 10.3? You know, I'm throwing out a number, something lower if we really um, look at this. Because way back when, when Sean Magnano came up with the 10.5, he quietly said, by the way, this will mean incredible stress on operating budgets, unless the world changes as we know it. And so I did want to reopen that in the context of the guidelines. So it's I'm looking at the revenue projections, an expense line, and an expense line within the town operating budget where I think we could achieve some savings so that municipal, I think, has some staffing shortages or some staffing woes. I don't want to cut municipal, but I wanted to leave some flexibility there. So there's one program that's not operating well and has a lot of vacancies and I wanted to discuss whether we could freeze it for a couple of years at current staffing. So those are the pieces and I've mentioned them before. I just want to make sure I get them on. Last time I tried to mention them, Mandy said too early. Now I think is the right time. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Kathy. Uh Paul? Yeah. So if I'm hearing what the sort of this policy decision points that the finance committee is identifying. One is to, um, it, well, Kathy just mentioned a change in the percentage for capital, 
uh, going from 10.5 to whatever percentage that you might think. One is to um, offer, um, the, I think it's sort of two things. One is offered maybe offering differing, differing percentages to each of the entities um, with the intent of giving more money to schools, I think is what I heard Kathy say. I don't know if it means all schools or regional schools or elementary. So but I think that that's a decision point. Are we going to move away from our traditional, everybody gets the same percentage increase? That's a policy discussion. Uh, I think I've also heard, you know, the interest in looking at the projections and, you know, we, and I just want to clarify that we look at the projections all year long. Um, you know, we learn more about state aid in January from, from house one. We learn more when waste and means comes out, we adjust, we adjust, we adjust if we see something else coming in. So those, um, projections, um, are pretty consistent. I, I think we're welcome. We welcome if you, if you identify some line items and say, help us ex explain why you're making these projections. We're, we're happy to talk about that. But I just want to be clear that um, these things are not, uh, they're, they're moving all the time um, as we learn about uh, collections and, uh, re you know, different fees and things like that. If, if departments during the budget process say, I'm going to increase fees in, in certain areas, we want to include that into it. So there, so that's a, I just want to identify that as a discussion point. And then the fourth thing I think I hear is uh, Manny Joe wanting to have sort of a, a separate discussion on get, on enterprise funds, and maybe that's part of this document or not. So, those, I think there's sort of four things that are that I can hear the finance committee talking about. Thank you, Bernie. Yeah, thank you. Um, in terms of the uh, charter review, it'll be a while before the committee comes up with uh, a request for funds, and it is quite likely to be modest. So I'm not, um, I'm, 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 we shouldn't be concerned about that. Um, you know, we have some resources from town departments that we, we can employ and uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll need to do much more homework than, uh, uh, <laughs> than we have done. So I wouldn't expect to see in the next month or so a request from uh, the Charter Commission. Um, I'm, Welcome the idea of shortening this budget document. Uh, in the past, we've always sort of relied on this as, as, as uh, being a document for a broader audience, not just the uh, uh, three or four folks that the memo is adjusted, uh, addressed to. Um, I, I think uh, abandoning that and cutting out a lot of the history and a lot of the explanation and just coming up with a, a briefer document. And I agree that the executive summary should be just that executive summary of what we're recommending. So I welcome that. And I, I, I wish that we had copies of the edits that have already been done by me, uh, Councilor Haneke and others. Uh, it would make it easier for us to, uh, uh, if we had those in advance, would make it easier for us to, to go after this, I think. Um, I'm not uncomfortable with the fact that the town manages to run somewhere between four and six percent in um, uh, free cash at the end of the year. Now, I remember back in the good old days where the Department of Revenue used to recommend five to ten percent. Um, I think we need to recognize that we have to be careful to make sure that uh, when we look at these uh, in, in terms of our in terms of our budgeting, uh, that one we're not running afoul of what DOR's guidelines might be about this. We, we um, send in our reports to them. Uh, and that's something that we'll have to rely on uh, Melissa's expertise for. Uh, I am, um, I'm agnostic as to whether we continue with the same percentages for each of the four main components. I think we should have some flexibility to do that from year to year, given uh, changes that, that the town faces. I am uncomfortable with the fact that we don't have from um, the schools a, a, a reasonable projection of how they're going to reduce their expenditures. Because as it stands now, from what we know, there's a structural deficit there and it's not gonna go away. Uh, we're, we're gonna hand, in, hand some more money over and we band-aided things. Uh, maybe a little bit, maybe a lot, but it's the deficit that they're facing is not going to go away without some 
meaningful change on the, the part of the school administration. Uh, I really want to, I really think that's an important piece to have before we nail down any, uh, uh, any, any final decision on this. Um, I've got to check my notes here because I'm wondering. Um, we have some policy decisions, you know, in terms of capital, uh, do we want to put aside less than 10 and a half percent? That's debatable. Uh, do we want to contribute less to OPEB? OPEB? That's debatable. Um, what we also have to debate is what impact that might, those decisions might have on our bond rating. Because we're going to be borrowing money uh, for the school, for the library, um, who knows what else. We're going to be going back into a situation where bonding, muni bonds right now are, are there's a halo around muni bonds right now. Uh, how long that halo stays is beyond me. But I'm willing to bet that in a year we'll be in a recession and in a year we'll see uh, bonding costs go up. So it's, it's important for us to make sure we maintain our bond rating. It's also important for us to move as rapidly as we can where we have to do borrowing to lock in those rates because they're not going down. Uh, regardless of what gets said on the uh, by the talking heads on the TV. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Haneke? Yeah, um, I'll address some of my thoughts on some of the potential recommendations. Um, I would like to, at least for this year, recommend even increases in operating budgets with a caveat. Um, and that being that initially, once the budget deficit is satisfied, that instead of increasing that 3% to say three and a half if money comes in, that we start with trying to make up the ARPA money first into the region's base. That's how I would sort of recommend, um, a, I, I think Kathy's getting at a potential different percentage. Um, there's been a lot of debate as to which the base should be for the region. And so I think it's reasonable to say as a recommendation, start by trying to increase the region's base and then give everyone the same quote percentage increase um, to try and make up that one-time ARPA money. I don't know how we'd word that in there, um, but, but I could get behind supporting that as a differential in how I know the percentages would look different on the budget sheet, but but that's how I would think about that. On the capital percentage, I don't want to decrease the capital percentage. Um, and part of that is when I look at it and I look at where the capital is going to and I, I listen to the conversations that the Region School Committee has been having on, on everything, I expect the regional capital requests to increase in the next year or two. And I don't want that, I don't want us to have to pit that increase against our other capital requests for non-region stuff. And by decreasing capital from 10 and a half to something else, um, I worry that we would be pitting those against each other. Um, and we know that the capital lines for the region have been large for a number of years in the out years um, and could increase a lot. And so I, I look at that 10 and a half as not, I know it, I know it squeezes the operating side of the expenditure sheet, but it is, a, it is helpful not just to all of the borrowing we're hoping to do on the municipal side, including fire and DPW and all of our roads and all of our other infrastructure and, and um, equipment maintenance, but it's also helpful to allow us to say yes to the region and their upcoming capital needs. So I would be against decreasing that capital percentage um, local receipts, Paul asked for some questions. So what I noticed was other department revenue has some significant revenue in two unbudgeted lines in the quarter for state election reimbursement and the liability account maintenance. Should those be added into the lines? I understand maybe state election reimbursement isn't every other year thing, um, but maybe we should add it in every other year. Um, Cherry Hill Greens fees were very high. Um, they seem to be staying high. Have we built that into our revenue departmental receipts budget projections. The alcohol annual licenses seem to be fairly steady at 150K, but we budget for 125K. 
um, can we logically increase that budgeting line slightly above 125K because we've got history at 150K um, are some of them. And then the Amherst College seems to have increased its miscellaneous recurring revenue, um, ha has seemed to be part of the increase in miscellaneous recurring revenue. Um, is that increase budgeted into the FY26 budget? It did not look like it was. So those were some of the local receipt lines that I thought might be a little be able to be a little bit higher. Um, I understand why interest has gone up a little bit in the budget, but that we don't want it to go up as much as we might think it might be, because some of that relates to the um, the grants we've received and interest on that, but also if rates ever do go down or wherever they might go, or when we don't have those and start spending the capital stabilization, the interest will go down. And if we've increased it too high, um, we harm our budgets in the future. So I get why I, I support where it's gone and why it's not gone higher. I think in our budget guidelines, we should actually put um, spend surplus spending revenue in a goal. That f four to five percent goal of surplus at the end of the year, I think maybe we should just state in the budget and then say, and when that comes in, if it comes in, we've already done that with reparation stabilization. Um, opioid is not in here, but um, maybe we should put a section in the budget guidelines that says after the closeout, here's where we want you to put them so that everyone knows this is our goal for those closeout numbers and what our guidelines for those numbers are since we don't adopt guidelines till after we've gotten the closeout. Um, I would be okay slightly decreasing op OPEB contributions um, to gain some of that revenue into the expenditure sides to put it somewhere else, I guess, in the expenditure side. And then on enterprise fund, what I would like us to, to put in the budget guidelines, particularly, um, I was concerned with the sewer enterprise fund that they had FY24 deficits and they did not contribute their entire amount of planned um, budgeting to the enterprise fund revenue side, um, reimbursements into the town. And so, I want to make sure we put into our budget guidelines that our enterprise funds fees and revenues should be set so that we know we will be able to meet our expenses there without any deficits. There were a couple that had deficits, some were expected, some were not. I was mostly concerned with the sewer enterprise fund having larger deficits and going forward that maybe we have not set those rates appropriately. And so I want, that's what I'm looking for in terms of the enterprise funds into these guidelines. Thanks. Thank you. Kathy? A duo team here. Um, okay, so Mand Mandy, Mandy went off went after some of the small revenue lines. It looks to me like excise is on the low side. If I, I it's cars. If I look at, um, and I'm looking at uh, multiple years on this, when you look at it, we're not projecting even at the level of um, 20, FY22. You know, so if I go back, we we're, low all the way through, we're quite a bit low. The other one is investment income. And I know it's hard to estimate that. However, if I take what we say is in general capitalization and what will be in capital stabilization funds, and I do the simplest 4% on it, we're low on the projection of that. And we've been way under. So that's a big, that's been a big source of the surplus. Um, and you can see it in the fourth quarter and it was again last year. So those are two big ticket items rather than Mandy mentioned some of the smaller ones. So it's hard to predict these, but if four years in a row, you're on the low side, there's a point at which you, th unless we think there's a recession. And I and I realize if, if there's a recession, people don't buy cars. However, you know, at some point, people have to buy cars. So I think what we're seeing is they put up buying cars all the way through COVID and the cars got old. <laughs> um, and that's where, so those are two places and I'm not saying go all the way up to the past, but um, the 4%, I mean, Bernie was, you know, how do we know where interest rates are going? We're hoping that we'll get a municipal interest rate of 4% or less on a long-term bond 
but I know you can get 4% right now, even on uh, some dividend, you know, from pretty conservative investments. So that's just, those are low. And as we draw down on any of those funds, I realize the base goes down. So this isn't, this isn't a way of uh, securing 27, 28, 29. So I know we have to think of whatever we do on the operating budget side, we have to think that there's revenues three years down the road, not just two years down the road. So that's where I can't do those kinds of um, adjustments. Um, so Mandy's suggestion was once, I think what I heard you say is once we're about half of the year through and we have a better idea of where the current year is, we could revisit some of the assumption, uh, some of the projections. Um, and uh, it, last year, our mid-course correction is we didn't have to make a payment to pension. And that's when we went up to the 4%. Um, so to the extent interest, uh, health insurance miraculously came in at less than 13. Um, so, so I agree with that way of doing it, but make in our guidelines, we could say where we'd like that money to go rather than it just accrues to a surplus in the following year. So, so that's that was my thinking, and I am totally willing to get a rough draft that gets down to a shorter version with all the we recommend left blank. <laughs> you know, if we can't get today to the we recommend parts, and I'll stop. Any other discussion? I'm not sure where we are, but <laughs> I don't think there's a a lot of agreement. But I, I do think that um, we we should we should see if we can. Um, I mean, I just so everyone understands um, the budget that the school, the regional school, put together. Uh, our assessment is twice what we have said we will increase is 6% rather than 3%. Um, and that's like $550,000. So that's the amount that the school would like us to come up with. Um, the regional school would like us to come up with. And I'm not sure that I've heard anywhere where we could come close to that. I mean, we could maybe get half, half of that, but we couldn't come close to Five hundred fifty thousand dollars by, you know, adjusting assumptions basically, um, unless we want to really, you know, squeeze the budgets. Um, Paul, I, you know, if we dropped our OPEB con contribution, what impact would that? I mean, how how much play do we have in the OPEB in, in order to maintain our bond rating? It's 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 one element of it, right? And we can dig out the bond rating, but they do identify it. You know, we we also we always tout it when we make our presentation to the to uh, standard employers that we have maintained this as a disciplinary. Method. And it's just it's 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 not a. Uh, it, I don't I don't know if they will lower us a, a ranking because of it, but it's it just builds into our culture, our financial competence. I think is what what it does. It's just another argument that we use, including our staffing and our projections and being conservative and all those types of things. I think a key thing for the council is like I mean, in some ways it's is this a revenue problem or an expenditure problem? And I think we don't know. You know, I think there is not there aren't projections going out. Um, you know. I just wonder if I came in with a seven percent increase, without I just need you would need you would ask for me for a lot of justification for what what that's what and why haven't you managed it before? So I just want to make sure the playing field is level with the town departments. And, and also, I just want to point out that the you know the ARPA money that we put in last year was three hundred fifty five thousand, and now the the ask is basically five hundred fifty five thousand. So. Um, it's going up, it's not going down. Um, and that worries me that, you know, using, you know, projections, however we want to do it, I just don't see how we have enough play in our budget to, uh, to get to that number without, without, you know, making, you know, things very difficult. Um, Council Haneke? Yeah. Um, so 
I think part of that 500,000 is because it includes the 300,000 we gave them last year, um, I think. Um, so, so that their ask is based on what we voted last year and what they actually received from us, which is where that fight about what the quote base is. But I do wanna note, um, when I did my own spreadsheet on their, their presentation, and I assume they'll figure it out when they start doing it again, their 4% increases um, in scenario one were actually not, well, the, their scenario one numbers were not 4% across the board. And I think it was just a mistake um, <laughs> when they were trying to produce them up. But um, my spreadsheet showed that for, let me see which one it was, for Leverett, it was only a 2% increase. So there's, there's they and, and that fell across the whole board um, where it was never corrected in, I don't think, any of the scenarios. And so um, those numbers may change. And that scenario one included a potential um, surplus on their end. Um, in terms of in terms of a complete restructuring, and I think we have to recognize that that's the scenarios that they gave us were based on a restructuring that we don't know whether the school committee will do or not, and we don't know how much of the structural issues that actually takes care of, and that's something maybe we need to put into our guidelines. Um, but that five hundred and some thousand above our initial guidelines is partially because the ARPA money is not there, which is why I said I could potentially say at this point, if we're not, it, it, that I wanna keep our increases the same, but maybe we can find a way to add that ARPA one-time funding into their base, at least minimally or some of it or something, and then do increases above that if it's possible. Um, but, but I think there's a long way to go and we have to figure out what we want from all of the functional areas, not just the manager's functional areas in terms of information when budgets are presented to. Kathy? Hi. Um, I just wanted to say, I was not talking about going all the way, Bob. I, you know, when I was looking at 3%, I was talking about something more and and we haven't seen the elementary school yet. Um, we just know it's out there in the distance. Um, I thought last year that there was probably leeway um, when Bernie had asked about some hard look at expenses and there was potentially some potential lowering of expenses. But last year we didn't have to talk about elementary at all in the spring because they had ESSER money. So they are, they are have a big hole in the budget going forward. So I, I, when I was saying school, I was talking about both of them, but I don't really know the elementary side so at all. So I am in a something more for schools than the flat three. And Mandy just offered the put, make sure it's on the base and it might already be on the base um, of the 3%, you know, if, if we look at what the 3% is. Um, so in any case, I just, I don't know how to go here without revenue numbers and expense numbers, because I'm not trying to generate a deficit <laughs> and I'm not trying to draw on stabilization funds for an operating budget or, free cash for an operating budget. I think we need that free cash. Uh, the the uh, My mentioning roofs last time uh, has got the schools looking at roofs because they know they have roofs. And if they get into the accelerated repair program, if we, there'll be a different line on regional capital than we've seen in the past. Um, so I, I understand, so Mandy, if that's where the capital projections need the 10.5, I'm fine with that because they weren't in any of the five years worth. Um, so I just, I just, I want us to have some flexibility in these guidelines. Now, I may be the only one that wants to move away from equal. I'll just point out that equal is something we've done in the past because it was easy. 
it it it's really easy you get it in the fall in the in the indicators and then you say yes and then we don't have to have a long discussion about it because the numbers are what the numbers are and that my under my understanding of where that came from our history is when two and a half came in it was an easy way to start thinking about budgeting um, in terms of our revenue increases. That doesn't mean we always need to do it. And in the past, there were times where we did more in a particular area um, based on the need of that area. Um, so uh, that is all I can say on this because I can't, I don't have the number bandwidth right now other than doing what Mandy's done where she's downloading as much data as possible and creating her own spreadsheets and I haven't done that. Alicia? Um, yes, thank you, Bob. Um, so I'm, I haven't been talking much because I'm still working on developing my particular opinion on this. And I was interested in hearing what other counselors and um, committee members had to say. But I think last week, and this is just in response to Kathy's comment, last week I mentioned thinking that like we are going to need to start thinking outside of the box, looking for creative, non-precedented ways to address these issues. And so maybe I am with Kathy on thinking that maybe we should not offer all of the same percentage of increases. Um, I just don't feel like I have enough information to say exactly what those percentages should be at this point, which is why I haven't been really sharing. But Kathy said that she's not sure if anyone else is with her on that. So I did want to speak up and say that I am interested in exploring that option. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Haneke. So one potential way of exploring it is to ask in our budget guidelines that the, the four functional areas, I believe the region might already be somewhat doing this, um, do more of a zero-based budgeting presentation and look in coming up with their functional areas of budgets so that we can every so often, including maybe this year or next year, so that we can really see, we talk about in the budget guidelines, I think efficiencies and effectiveness and all. Um, Towns change, schools change, libraries change um, with a 3% and never re-looking at too much about changing all of that. Maybe some of the programming within each of the functional areas is not serving our residents well and needs to be rethought um, on a significant budget scale. Um, we can't do that in the next three months though much, but we could ask for it in our budget guidelines that would help us potentially figure out a way to have a conversation about whether equal increases every year are appropriate um, based on what is going on in each of the functional areas or not. Thank you. Andy? Yeah. Um... I mean, I'm not unwilling to have the conversation about changing the long-term policy, but I do have concerns about it. And I would, so it would take some to convince me that it's the right thing to do, uh, which is different from saying, Kim, don't have the conversation. Uh, what are the, I guess there are a couple things. One is that, you know, uh, reference was made to zero based budgeting and um the, you know looking at a different approach to budgeting i think that uh is a valid exercise but it's most important you know it's important for all segments of the budget including the schools and one of the difficulties that we have had with the school budgets is that their view of um, maintaining current services year for year um, has them always starting out with a huge deficit. And then um, they're trying to say, look at all of the cuts that we have to make for the deficit. And I think that, uh, you know, we continue to press the schools and they don't really change their budget preparation philosophy 
Um, so we're always back in the same situation that they are projecting a greater need of increase than revenues. And if we meet that need of revenues, um, it comes at the expense of something else. And um, we need to look at what that something else is. Um, as far as it, which gets back to my other concern is that we are a little bit different from the other three towns in that um, needs for municipal services are greater. They're greater for lots of reasons, probably the biggest one being the fact that we're uh, paying for um, services that are provided because we have three higher ed institutions that uh, are tax exempt, but still uh, need roads, still need public safety, still need other kinds of municipal services. But um, it would be um, a real uh, mistake to not come into this without recognizing but we always try and tell the other towns that um, there is a burden that comes with being the largest community in of the three and um, having some of the problems that don't exist in smaller towns just because of the nature of the pressure that comes on the bigger community to provide those additional kinds of services. And uh, I think you need to really consider if you're going to go and change the percentages, uh, what is it you're suggesting that happens on the municipal side? Uh, when we do those municipal hearings every year with the department heads, um, you, you know, they're always saying, yep, we'll live with what has been proposed by the town manager, but there's always these little pieces in there about um, if we had additional funds, um, we could meet these goals, and those goals are not insignificant. So um, I just have some caution about uh, where we're going with this uh, and we'll press hard if we have this conversation. Kathy? I am not talking about decreasing the 3% for municipal or for library. I'm talking about just considering increasing the school, which is why I'm looking at revenues and other expenses. And I think there is one department in municipal that's running with a huge amount of vacancies, and we could potentially freeze it, to gen and it's generating the surplus we just saw in expenditures on staffing until, and it's Chris, the, it potentially, I'm so I'm saying 3% for municipal, which will leave some budgeting room within the municipal for Paul and staff to look at the efficiencies of the departments and make some decisions. So Andy, I was not talking about going lower. I think we are short staffed in municipal and that we are really lucky that we have people willing to work extra hard sometimes with two job titles, you know, so I'm not looking at they could less than three. So I just want to be clear about, I was talking about a greater percentage and looking for the revenue side and the expense side on where we could do that within a budget guideline that didn't generate a deficit. So that that's where my math is going, not lower, because I totally agree on the municipal side. Uh, Councilor Walker? Um, yeah, I just have a question maybe for Paul, um, just in relation to what Kathy just said. The vacancies in Crest, are they currently being filled now, though? Uh, yes, we just hired two people. Um, and and part of the um, expenses for Crest are, are uh, we've received substantial grant support for Crest over the last few years, and a lot of their expenses go into that grant rather than from town funds. 
Um, sorry, just one follow up to that. Is mm -hmm. there a end date to the grants that we've been utilizing to supplement that? Uh, so it's a year by year grant. We just learned a few days ago that we got the grant for FY 25, 26, so or 25. Um, so it, it was late in the game. It's always a battle at the state house. So I, I think it's a challenge every year. Sorry, one additional after that. Mm -hmm. So is it reasonable to expect that we will see a similar outcome with the CRESS budget for the next fiscal year, considering that we know we will have that grant that we've been pulling from? That's for this fiscal year. It, we don't guarantee any grant funding for FY26, which is the fiscal year that we're really talking about. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Tom? Thank you, Bob. And apologies in advance. I have to uh, jump for a previously uh, committed 1130, so I'll be leaving you soon. Um, it's a bit of a non sequitur, not Chris, but uh, back to what Andy brought up. I guess I uh, just wanted to second his point on the um, zero base budgeting versus, versus using the baseline. Uh, the preserving the baseline services and programming model, uh, including the model of delivery in the schools, um, which then leads to the apparent crisis of cuts that we, we go through every year. I know that the new superintendent has ideas about innovative approaches to planning, and I really applaud that. And I, uh, I, I haven't lived through these cycles with you, so I don't know if zero-based budgeting is something that's uh, been a battle that, uh, that has already been fought. But um, I, I, I hope gen we'll genuinely uh, try to uh, try that and see that for the schools going forward. Um, that's my comment. Thank you. Any other comments? Um, I'm not sure again where we're at. I mean, we've had a lot of discussion, <laughs> but I don't know that we've had a lot of consensus. Um, I, Maybe we have a consensus on at least preserving 3% increase right now um, with guidelines that say maybe we should try to find more ways of funding the regional schools uh, through, you know, through projections and expenses. Um, once we get more information about that, maybe we'll uh, we'll be able to to adjust um, without tapping into the the free cash that we we have from last year. Um, does does that seem like a reasonable path forward? To I mean, it won't. I don't know that we know kind of how things are going to break over the next year. Uh, so I think we. It's very hard for us, for me to at least understand that we can actually come up with more money for the schools. I mean, I think, you know, traditionally, we haven't really dealt with that at this stage of the budget process. We've dealt with it kind of in the May, you know, April, May time frame. Um, so uh, I don't know. I mean, that may be kicking the can down the road, but I mean, I think if we put in the guidelines that, you know, we would like to see, you know, more money go to the regional schools, if we can get there without, you know, doing something that makes the town manager and the finance director uh, uneasy, <laughs> um, you know, maybe that's the way to do it at this stage in the process. And that means we're kind of not, I mean, we, we could say we could try or we could say we, you know, our target is X amount of dollars um, that we we think we can save or we think we can find somewhere in the budget. Uh, Bernie? Bernie, you're on mute. Free cash stuff is always interesting because it's, and it's always misunderstood. Um, it just is a point you know, having been um, 
forever in the free uh, in the uh, nonprofit world and in uh, in in the public sector. Uh, you just want to point out that to be a going concern, we have to retain revenues, um, and that <laughs> uh, the fact that we generate a free we have free cash just means we're retaining revenues. That we're 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 able to be a going concern. We can't spend it all. Um, I would, um, going back to some earlier discussion, I sort of like the idea that uh, maybe we can incorporate it into this document, that if we do generate free cash, these are some of the purposes we might put it to, and those purposes would be reflecting the one-time uh, only nature of free cash, um, setting some of it aside so we are retaining some revenue, and then where we might uh, look to, to utilize the, the, the difference in free cash. In terms of uh, the guidelines, the budget guidelines, I think it's only fair for us to say now that in this point in time, we can say 3%. Um, so the situation is, it's it's liminal. It may change. Uh, and as it changes, we will update the guidelines. We should acknowledge that there are um, some uh, uh, problems and some tough spots for the for the schools. We're not unmindful of that. We're not, we do want to be helpful, but at this point in time, we can't say how helpful we can be. And that's, those are fair statements. Councilor Haneke. So, um, I think we need to also settle on who's doing a redraft of this um, and, and everything. I know, Bob, you had indicated maybe you would. Um, it sounds like Kathy and I might have more solid convictions on what we want to see or do with this document. Um, and so maybe we can decide how we're going to do that, because I think it's going to be hard for the committee to vote anything without seeing document that's close to what we would send to the council um, with recommendations written out and where those options are and all um, and all. So uh, I don't know what you want to do about that or what your suggestion is. And um, yeah. Um, well, I, I, as I said, I, in my email, I just, I, I took a, a very quick and dirty look at what we, what we had and I just tried to update it to to be the numbers going forward and the the dates and all that um the years um I'm fine if you want to work with Kathy we just need to make sure we're not creating a subcommittee because you know we have to be careful about that but I think if Kathy you wanted to take the lead and work with or Mandy if you want to take the lead and work with with Kathy uh work with other people to to work to do it uh i'm okay with that but uh, athena do you have a some comments on this i i would say if kathy wants to take the lead then she can ask for input from members from any member can send input um and then she'll um i think present a draft at the next meeting is that what you're suggesting yeah something that sounds perfect uh, do you uh, council hanneke are you okay with that and Kathy, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna ask. It sounds like if Mandy got it down to seven, I was gonna flip it. I will send her a marked up piece to say here are areas because I didn't. I started to mark up what would I took out, what would I move around, and I focus more on the core recommendations, and I didn't get to the other. But if Mandy, I am totally willing to have her be in charge of getting this down and then us all sending for the time being i think we're talking about not set not changing the major recommendation area leaving leaving that to be a to come bullet 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 um you know however we set that up and just getting it down to a condensed form is is that correct that's that's where we are and then mandy if you what what spent was useful in the past is that chart at the end comes from the indicators and it yeah. would be good to have it not be go, just just go ahead and plunk it in 
you know, the picture at the very end. So people see what we're talking about. So that either becomes part of it, you know, the projections or it doesn't become part of it. But that very final document was pure um, projections from the, the November. So if Mandy, if you're comfortable with that, I will just send just you the, you know, comment section or the X out section on what I started to do because I didn't get it down to seven. Councilor Haneke, are you but, okay with that? So I can do that. I will say two of the pages I cut out were those projections because they're available in other places. <laughs> so um, I, I did just delete them. But if people want to keep them in because they're, it's nice to have them right near where people are reading, I'm okay with keeping them in. Um, I did also want to say one of the things I was focused, you know, I cut out the entire section on budget process. Um, and planning for future years, although some of that planning for future years might be able to stay in it. Um, those those were some of sort of the big things I cut out. Um, but one of the things I noticed when when we were at the financial indicators meeting that I wanted to make clear clearer in this document, and I thought I'd just bring it up now, um, was the document always starts out with a revenue projection that is an increase of X percentage over the year before. I think this one is, um, where, where is it? It's, it's, um, it's an increase of, um, 4.6% year over year from FY 25. And then a capital that was an X percentage increase over year over year and all. And, and what I found, of other committee members that were not counselors, they were looking at that and going, wow, you're really spending a lot on capital. But those increases, and well, you had a 4%, 4.6% increase in budget, but you're only giving us 3%. Why is that? Well, that's because our debt service for the debt exclusion increased tremendously between FY25 and FY26. And that is part of that percentage. And so one of the things I wanted to make clear with however it's left in here is, Here's what the increase is when you get rid of the debt exclusion increase and the debt to capital, because that shows capital increasing a million and a half in in, exp in expenditures for the year. But they're spe for specific purposes that we can't spend it on anything else, and it's going to keep doing it year over year for a little bit. Um, and so I think we need to make clear that that makes our budget increases look higher than they actually are. They're inflated because of the first ramp up of these debt exclusion numbers that really shouldn't be talked about. We should talk about the budget in numbers that don't necessarily include those debt exclusion numbers too, in addition to the ones that do. Hey, Andy uh, and Kathy, I need to step away for just a second. If you can just moderate from now on. For, I will. For, Andy. For, yeah, I'll, I'll be really quick. Uh, Mandy, uh, I agree that I think you, we could um, do something about the future year projections to make it briefer. But the one thing that I would hesitate to lose is that one of our principles is that we don't just budget thinking about one year, but we think about the future, that we need to be developing financial plans on a multi-year basis. And I think that's just sound management policy for any organization. So as you do that redraft, um, you know, making it briefer is great. Losing it is not great. Um, I'm just going to build on, I don't see any other hands, so I'm calling on myself. Um, so Mandy, by the same token in revenues, exclude the $2 million in revenues from debt exclusion. You, you know, so it's, you know, the, the whole purpose is to say we only had this much money in the coming year and it has to pay for all of these things. And it it shouldn't, that money is both in the top line and the bottom line and it cancels out. Um, so whatever we can do to make it clearer on what constraints we face would be great. Um, so it's, yeah, that's, you know, it's a little bit too, I feel the same way about state aid, you know, that we show it up 
in a revenue side, and then we show a subtraction of it down below. So we don't really have that money to spend, <laughs> you know, but in any case, I'm, I'm not going to worry about that weirdness um, on a, it's, it's, we never get that money. It's just subtracted before, for, you know, the, the, the cherry sheet dollars. It, it's never there to spend. So just try, because people, you know, when people are looking to next year's budgets and we've had it with counselors, three more of these staff, two more of those will look about this amount of money. And I said, no, the total that we have to spend and uh, some high percentage of that is just the wages and benefits of the people who work for us. I mean, it's, we, we have, we have extremely small wiggle room in all of this, if wiggle is the right flexibility in, in all of this. So just do it in both ways as clear as possible. And I'll just, I'll send you, yeah, I uh, I could, uh, you know, I could commit today is Friday. I can commit to get you marking up. We're meeting next week, Bob. Is that correct? Yes. And, and are we meeting at, starting at nine next week? I believe so, yes. Okay. And so I was going to do the same request that I did last time is to at least, if we can budget for two and a half hours, that it would be nice if we got to a rough draft um, of of core, core points on, on a few things on this. And we haven't finished on free cash and we haven't, uh, fourth quarter was just, I, I said this last time, but what Holly gave us is a gift. It was such a clear fourth quarter report with summary items that really tell you where to look on what's going on here. So I really want to thank you for the extra work that went into that. Yeah, it was very helpful. Thank you. Uh, any other discussion on the budget guidelines for now? Um, Okay, so I think we should try to look at the supplemental. I'm going to postpone the fourth quarter report because I, I think we need to talk about the supplemental budget requests. Uh, it's pretty clear that we can't deal with all of them, but I think we could uh, certainly uh, talk about the. Um, it's 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 unfortunately it's in uh, 12A. Um, FY25 12A contains both the reparation stabilization fund and the capital stabilization fund. So unless we're prepared to uh, put all that money into the capital stabilization fund, I think we need to wait, uh, uh, hold off on that. But it seems like we can talk about uh, the waste hauler study and the special revenue, the opioid settlement fu fund um, we could make a recommendation on those um, without, I don't think there's much controversy on those. So um, does, every, does everyone agree that, I, I know that last week we talked about kind of voting up and down on all of these at once, but I, I don't think we can. And I'd like to get as much as we can recommended to the, the council in prior to Monday's meeting, but um, I think we can't. Uh, I don't know that we can, I mean, I'm open to suggestions, but I would recommend that we reduce the, 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 uh, the um, appropriation for the waste haul study to 75,000, because I think that's all we, they, that the town really needs that we talked to Guilford yesterday. That's all Guilford needs to get the RFP done and get the results back. Um, Bob, it might be helpful to go through these one by one. Would you like me to put them on the screen so you can sure. decide what you want to do? Because I think it's, we're kind of, okay. yeah, trying to trying to go a whole hog at all of them. Okay. If that's okay. That's fine. And just to be clear to members and members of the public, we're, we're holding uh, the public forums on these, the public forum on these on Monday at seven o'clock. Um, and if the finance committee doesn't vote um, any recommendations on one or all of these, then um, we'll still hold the public forum, but the v council vote will be postponed. Yeah, I don't, again, I, I think we're, everyone agrees with the uh, reparation stabilization fund, but the 
The amount to, to the capital stabilization fund depends in part on what we decide on some of the other um, the other uh, orders. So um, I think uh, anyway, uh, Councillor Henneke, do you want to make a comment? So I actually don't want to change this order at all unless we're going to increase the capital stabilization fund. <laughs> um, but but given some of the things we've said, if we reduce waste hauler. I'm not sure I want to put it into capital stabilization. I think I want to leave it in free cash. And okay. so I don't see that reduction changing this number at all. Um, and we can't actually increase this number on our own legally. We could only decrease it. And I'm, I'm at this point, I'm not willing to decrease it. I know there are some conversations about potentially using some of this money for capital projects at the region or at the other schools. We can't do that ourselves. We have to get something from the manager to do that. And if it's in capital stabilization, it could come out of that if in the future we decide to do it that way. So I'm ready to vote this one um, okay. personally. Okay, Kathy? I, I agree and that's exactly where I was gonna go. So when we come back, when we get down to waste hauler, and it goes to a lower number. I want it just to stay in free cash, not okay. not to. I think that's what Mandy just said. So it's not. So so we would transfer this to the stabilization fund and reparation. And when we get to opioid, I'm going to have the same view. But I, if if you recommend, if we're recommending, was that a motion to support this? I would second it. <laughs> I, I can make the formal motion. I move to recommend the council adopt appropriation and transfer order FY25-112A um, as presented. Shane seconds. Okay, uh, we had a, uh, a motion. Any discussion? All right, let's, uh, let's vote on this. Uh, I will vote aye. Um, Kathy? Yes. Uh, Councilman Haneke? Aye. Andy? Yes. Uh, Alicia? Yes. Okay, Bernie? Concur. Uh, Tom? Tom had to leave he at left. 11. Oh, he left, yeah. sorry. Um, Matt? Matt also left. Matt also left, okay. All right, so it's uh, unanimous. Uh, five voting members and one uh, present uh, resident member. Okay, so why don't we go to the second one? Right, so this is a million for uh, roads and sidewalks. Uh, are there any discussion of these, Bernie? Um, the most frequent comment made to me um, by people I run into anywhere and everywhere is we need to fix the potholes. Uh, so I, I would really hope we fix some potholes. So do I have a, a motion, Kathy? Yes, I would make a motion to recommend that the Finance Committee recommends approval of appropriation and transfer order FY25-05B uh, to appropriate a million dollars for roads and sidewalk repairs. A second. Okay. Uh, all right. Any uh, additional discussion? Okay. The motion has been made and seconded. Uh, now I'll call for a vote. Um, Councillor Haneke? Aye. Councillor Walker? Yes. Andy? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Uh, I'm a yes. Uh, Bernie? Support. All right, so this is also uh, unanimous. Uh, let's move to the next one, which is 05C. So this is for the the uh, sidewalk plow. <laughs> um, any discussion? Councilor Haneke? So I'm not sure I can support this one. Um, it seems like it's needed because we're taking on plowing for non Amherst owned part adjacent sidewalks, <laughs> however you want to 
refer to it as. And I, I don't think I can vote for this until we've cleared up what a plowing policy is that is equitable and logical and all of that. And until we've done that, 200,000 seems like a lot for a few uses a year that isn't even needed for our own obligations versus to clear sidewalks that we don't aren't obligated to do under the bylaw. So I I'm not I, I think I'm gonna be voting against recommending this one personally. Does anyone else have any comments? Do I have a motion? Wait a minute. Um, I just okay. didn't get my hand up. Um, I think that the uh, one of the things that I was not clear about after the last conversation, why I would not want to vote on it today, is that a um, statement was made by Guilford that um, there are other uses that this is year-round equipment and not um, just for plowing, but we didn't really get a good explanation about what those other uses are and the value that this piece of equipment would have. And um, there was also um, a concern expressed about having lost two um, pieces of equipment and that uh, we uh, are down to having no spare and um, that that has consequences because if we have no spare and we lose the one the one remaining one, we can't even meet our responsibility to uh, take care of the sidewalks that we are absolutely required to take care of. So um, I am not ready to vote and will oppose um, uh, any motion to uh or, or any thought about not going forward um i think if there are remaining concerns we should postpone okay bernie uh, i heard that there are other uses for this piece of equipment and it's not something that uh was uh going to be only used for a handful of handful of sidewalks and until we uh, hire a snow removal enforcement officer uh, I think we need to have it, and I think um, you know the the uh, uh, doing some extra plowing. This is a pretty standard discussion and debate every single town that I've seen and been part of. So I, I'm willing to support this and and uh, uh, move move on. Um, Bob, if I may, I can't raise my hand when I'm sharing my screen, so I hope you don't mind okay. me interrupting. If I may, um, the Finance Committee will have an opportunity to uh, reaffirm or reconsider its vote. That's on the agenda for the public forums on the appropriations. So you have some options here. You can make a, someone can make a motion to not recommend, um, and that can be voted. Someone can make a motion to recommend, and that might be voted down, and then, um, or you can postpone the vote. Um, and then you'll have an opportunity to reconsider that vote or make a recommendation at the meeting on Monday. So you have some options. I, I would like to postpone the vote on this one because I think we're we're not we don't really have a consensus on the on the committee. Does that make sense to people? Agree. Okay. Okay. So but, Athena, what but hold on. Only if in postponing we're going to be able to get the information from Guilford that Andy just asked for. If not, there's no reason to postpone. We should just I, make a I have the same view that I would like Monday night to have a better understanding of what else it can be used for. Um, otherwise, I was probably going to be a negative on this. Um, um, Guilford won't be at the meeting on Monday, but I can make sure that his staff member who will attend um, can share that information. And even if we had a one-page Instead of writing, it would be helpful. Okay. <laughs> it could be a, par also, it could be a paragraph. <laughs> and I would also like to um, have confirmation that there is um, no backup equipment, that there's only one plow now and what the consequences are. Melissa? 
I, I just wanted to say that Guilford was here earlier. He just had to step away for 1130. So I, I just want to make people aware that while he, he knew he was not going to be available on Monday and um, Amy is coming in his stead on Monday. Um, I do know um, from co my conversations with uh, Guilford that there is one plow left. There used to be three um, for that did took care of sidewalks and other things. I don't know what those other things are. Um, and that two of them are down at this time. So there is one plow remaining. We'll, we'll get an answer from Gilford and Amy so that um, the committee can consider that on Monday if that's acceptable. Kathy? Yeah, and just if we can get in writing would be good um, because I also have an image of a small little tractor with a plow in front, like my uh, neighbor uses. <laughs> so I don't pr completely understand 200,000 because when when we talked about that as a JCPC, there was a sophisticated one, Bob, <laughs> that was gonna cost a lot. And the little ones we had now were not as good, but they kind of did the job. So it's just, it's, it's the price tag. You know, if we were looking at hundred thousand dollars with a plow that take comes off a tractor front and the tractor then can be used for clearing trash off the sidewalk there's prickers on the sidewalk or cleaning along the gutters you know what else can this thing be used for so just something in writing would help me vote positively for it okay so the questions i have that i'll um seek answers to before Monday are other uses of the plow, if there is backup equipment available now, and if there are less costly options. Is that correct? Yeah, that sounds good. Anybody else have any comments on this? Okay, uh, I think let's move to the next one. Okay, thank you. This is the waste hauler study. Um, Again, I um, and Andy concur can concur with this. TSO, we we talked about this a little bit, and we got a more a, a finer um, explanation from uh, from uh, Guilford about what this money was for, and it's really for a consultant to help with writing. Um, an RFP and going through the RFP program uh, process and getting bids from uh, waste haulers that would tell us what the cost of various options would be. Um, and it we recognize that there may be a need for some outreach, but we don't know what kind of outreach we need until we see the results from the RFP. So we don't really know what it is we need. Um, and I, I don't know. Athena, this I don't I don't really like the way this is worded. Uh, so, but we can't change the wording on it. So, um, and I don't know if if we can. I mean, we can recommend that that the wording be changed to reflect more of what the thing is actually used for uh, to be used for. Um, it's not really a waste hauler study. It's really an RFP. Uh, we've we've sort of. Uh, We've made the decision that we want to go with the, the council has made a, a decision that that we want an RFP. So I, I don't know what what the what this is for as it now stands. So, so my um, if I can answer that question, my understanding is that the study is for a consultant to develop the RFP. So we wouldn't put RFP in here. This is for the consultant to study what would go into the RFP with input from the Town Services and Outreach Committee. Um, and that's why it doesn't say RFP in this appropriation. That's my understanding. Okay. Uh, Melissa? It doesn't even say consultant, Athena, the way it's written. Yep, I understand that's the words we, we chose. If you, if you wanted to make a recommendation that includes that specific word, then I think that would be appropriate. Um, but yeah, it wouldn't, think, we, we wouldn't present a, a, an, uh, a, a different order. We would, the finance committee could make that recommendation and we could make sure to get it in on Monday. Yeah, I would, I would make the, I, well, good, Bernie. 
Yeah, yeah it, it's it's clear that nobody's clear. Um, again, I, I know the council made a decision. I happen to disagree. I think we're trying to solve a problem we don't have and spend money that we don't need to spend. Um, but it it does seem that no one is quite certain as to what the outcome of or the use of the, the $75,000 will be uh, down from 125. Uh, and if there's a prospect in here that we'd end up uh, with a recommendation that we hire additional staff, that's even more reason not to do it. But um, so I, I'm, I'm going to vote no on this because uh, I don't understand what the purpose is. Okay, Andy. No, uh, um, I'm only going to briefly uh, respond to Bernie's uh, last point, uh, but I. A little bit more about the discussion about how this has evolved. Um, Bernie, I think that uh, we have a waste hauler system that uh, we have no control over, that it has very high expense that is paid for by our residents and users of the system, and that we have no control whatsoever in uh, having uh, uh, how, how that is priced, that other communities that have had competitive processes have all succeeded in reducing their costs. So uh, there's good track record that this has been effective. Uh, we attended um, uh, a, a session at the last MMA conference that lasted several hours and went into extensive detail in supporting that and uh, that uh, the system that we have now without any consideration of composting is not um, environmentally sound because it throws things into dumps that produce methane that's not necessary. So I think that there is very strong reason to do this. And uh, the, um, but the other thing that I wanted to just report on regarding yesterday is uh, I very much appreciate the fact that uh, Paul came up with the original amount. I think that he recognized that if we go forward to full implementation, that it is going to require something more than just this first step of um, doing the request for proposal. However, um, we don't know that we're going to go beyond that first step um, unless we um, have a successful RFP process and response to the RFPs that, have, that are consistent with what other communities have seen. And so that the question that was really before the committee yesterday was we had made a recommendation to set aside funds for an RFP that um, we, um, that the amount that was put forward was greater than the amount that was necessary for that purpose. And uh, that, uh, a future decision could be made about additional funds, but that it was not necessary, in some ways not appropriate to make it now, and that that was our um, feedback as uh, far as it was concerned. The last thing that I just want to clarify for anybody who's asking, well, why is it costing this much money? Um, we have looked at the RFPs that have been most recently issued by um, Long Meadow, and uh, also since we've had the uh, some of us, but not all of us, have seen the one that was issued by Arlington because it was just uh, somebody just forwarded that to us um, within the last week, and it hasn't been shared with the entire committee. But both of those proposals are, are uh, those requests for proposals are very comprehensive and they run into uh, you know more than a hundred pages and the reason that they go into that much length and that it is not you can't just say oh Longmoto had a great proposal or Arlington had a great proposal this 
use it is because those proposals describe both what the community is um, has in the way of current resources, uh, number of households, all of the things that you would need to do to pro to respond to an RFP and put a cost on um, have to be particularized to the community and the community's expectations have to be clearly stated and uh, the consultants who um, have worked on these proposals know um, what is necessary and what they can build on from um, other RFPs that have been issued. And uh, that is why the uh, number <clears throat> that um, Guilford reported to us um, does uh, uh, make sense. And for those reasons, uh, we uh, suggested separating out the RFP from future things that future expenses that might be necessary, but could be voted at a future date. Thanks, uh, Councilor Haneke. I was going to make a motion. Um, so I move to recommend that the council reduce the sum total of appropriation in the appropriation and transfer order FY25 05D from 125,000 to 75,000, and then after reduction, uh, adopt the amended appropriation and transfer order. I second that. Second. Walker. Okay. Uh, discussion, Bernie? Okay, um, Andy, thank you for all that information. You've, uh, you've, you've managed to move me over a little bit. Um, and since the motion will be to reduce the amount, um, I will then have to, uh, I think logically have to support it. So uh, uh, thanks. I, uh, I, and I understand that you don't want to, uh, it's a common, uh, a common uh, mistake to copy other people's RFPs and expect a different result. So I, I understand the need to, 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 to go out and, and have one written for the community. I'm still not um, overall supportive of the project. Kathy? So just so I'm clear, we're voting on the motion to amend. Then we will vote again on the appropriation order or yeah. was or was Mandy's wording to recommend the appropriation order with the amendment. And I just, I'm going to be a yes, but I just need to know what I'm voting on. Yeah, um, Mandy's motion meant that you just have to vote once to reduce the amount and uh, recommend approval. So the motion was to recommend the town council reduce the sum of the order from 125 to 75,000 and then adopt as amended. I just, I wanted to be clear. For, so Bernie understood that it wasn't just to change the wording. Thanks. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, the motion has been uh, made and seconded. Uh, we'll now vote. I'll vote uh, first aye. Councilor Haneke? Aye. Kathy? Yes. Alicia? Yes. Andy? Yes. And Bernie? Knowing full well, I'll say yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, again, we have a unanimous uh, vote uh, to amend this, uh, the amount, and, and, and then recommend that to the council. Uh, let's move to the next one. So this is the Opioid Settlement Special Revenue Fund. It's basically just to move money that we received from the Opioid Settlement Fund into a reserve fund so we can better track what we have and 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 how it's being used. Um, does anyone have a discussion of this? Do I see, have a motion? Councilor Hanke? I actually have a question. So all the other free cash transfers say free cash, you know, to meet such appropriation, transfer from free cash for appropriation and further authorize. 
But this one says transfer that the town appropriate and transfer a sum from free cash in the undesignated fund balance of the general fund to the fund, to the opioid settlement fund. Why is this one sort of referencing free cash in a different manner? Holly or Melissa, can you answer that? I, I mean, honestly, I, I, I copied the vote from last year. I, I, I don't know, but I, I do think that um, that this um, account, like we track in one of the general fund revenue lines, um, this um, particular miscellaneous revenue. If I have if I have it correct, and so Holly can correct me if I'm wrong, and we don't we do not budget for it, we do not project for it because the um, the oh, decision was made by council mm -hmm. previously that we would move it into this uh, special revenue account. So it, as I understood what you just said, it's a different kind of free cash. It's not so free. <laughs> it, 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 it already has a specified purpose, um, and we just have to put it in the account to which its purpose is. It's a, you know, it, it's got school choice money. We can't just spend it. Um, so this is opioid money. We have to put it somewhere. Is that is that what I think the explanation was? Yeah, th that's my understanding. Okay. Yeah. Understand it is it's really just a bookkeeping exercise that you know we just want to make sure we s clearly separate this money out and it's not included in in any other way. Holly, um, I was just going to ask Athena if she could go back to one of the others. I guess I'm not sure what the distinction is in the wording. I'm I didn't I didn't. It says in the undesignated fund balance, oh, balance. of the general fund rather than just transfer and appropriate, appropriate and transfer from free cash to or for a, a different purpose. So Mandy was just wondering about these words. Um, but but I think the explanation provided, unless there's additional questions, is sufficient that it is it goes into the general fund with a specific purpose and it's just sort of an accounting thing to move it from that with the specific purpose to the opioid settlement fund. Uh, absolutely, yes. But I believe that that wording it has been used on others in the past. Um, uh, so I just, I am not sure what the difference, um, uh, go up. Yeah. And, uh, the other one just says from free cash rather than from. Right, but go up. a Undesignated um, fund balance. Go back up to the, I believe the first one. Same this thing from free cash and the undesignated fund. I think it's just a, it's just wording is slightly different. So there is really no difference in where the money is currently sitting. Thanks, Holly. Holly, your hand is still up. Did you want to say something? More? Okay. All right. Uh, so do I have a motion? I'll make a motion that the Finance Committee recommend to the Town Council uh, appropriation and transfer order FY 25-16A to transfer from free cash to the OPA Settlement Special Revenue Fund. Second. Okay. I have a motion and has been made and seconded. Do so, any other? Any just other? to clarify, re re we're recommending to adopt or approve. I think Kathy forgot those words when she said it. So. To adopt and approve. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, is that, uh, Andy, is that? Uh, yes. Amendment? Okay. Acceptable. Yep. All right. Uh, any other comments? Okay. We'll should vote. I, uh, I'll vote first. I vote aye. Kathy? Yes. Uh, Councilor Haneke? Aye. Andy? Aye. Councilor Walker? Yes. Uh, Bernie? Support. Thank you. Okay. So, <clears throat> Well, so um, I think we've. Thank you very much. Supplemental requests, and um, we've approved them all except for the sidewalk equipment, which we postponed, and uh, the waste hauler study, which we reduced. So, Kathy? 
Yeah, I just I have a request for Monday night for the hearing. Um, and it's um, the memo already has this, but somebody emailed me to say, can I see what is in our reserve accounts? And it's up in the upper paragraphs. Could we just have a table that would say we have this much in general stabilization when this happens? We have a little table. And so with the opioid settlement, I have asked and I've been told what is in that fund. And we see in the reparations fund what it will be. Just it would be useful just to have a little table that says we've been reserving this amount of money and this is what it'll be if these orders pass. Um, I think it's easy to do, but it means we can find it in one place rather than have to read it. That's just a, whatever is the easiest way to do it since we're clearly tracking it. I'll, I'll get you that, Kathy. Okay. Um, so the... Um... I do want to talk about, or does anyone have anything more to say about the fourth quarter report for FY24? Uh, again, I thought it was very good, very helpful. Um, and I really thought that it lays out very clearly, um, you know, where the money came from and where it, it went. Councillor Haneke? Yeah, um, I want to echo what Kathy said about these this fourth quarter report, I thought it was fantastic in the way it was presented and how much information was presented. Um, mm -hmm. Just some ob observations and then some questions related to those observations. Um, I, I found it interesting that our returned appropriations over the not last number of years have been consistently between one and 3%. So it seems like our expense side, as we were talking about budget guidelines, um, are fairly accurate estimates. It's the revenue surpluses that have had that larger, larger variety. Um, and I think that's where we're trying to figure out. Everyone kind of seems like a one-off reason for it, but year after year when that happens, how, how can we do a little bit better? Um, Cherry Hill, um, on the expenses side, it seemed like there was a statement that increased cart rentals increased the expenses. Were those increased expenses then set off by increased revenues for cart rentals? Um, like, or are we not asking for cart rental fees that cover the expense of cart rentals? Um, was just one thing. I was surprised to see that the enterprise fund, particularly sewer, did not um, cover the transfers required and didn't make many of the transfers that we had budgeted into the general fund. Um, and so I'm concerned as we go forward that we have not been budgeting our enterprise funds, particularly sewer well enough to take care of and cover the expenses, including unanticipated expenses that we know have um, gone up because our equipment is old and needs full replaced. Um, I was curious why the expenses for the North Amherst Library um, were not budgeted in FY24. In this fourth quarter, it seemed like that budget was zero. And so have we corrected that budgeting in future fiscal years? Um, and then on the revenue side, what struck out to me on or stuck out to me on that one was it seemed like, or now I guess on the expense side, one of the things that stuck out to me was that nearly all DPW expense lines were overspent except snow and ice. Um, it was, it seemed to be the only department that had consistent excess expenditures. And I, I'm curious as to why all most all the DPW line expense lines were overspent. Um, and if that's been an issue over the past number of years or whether this is an outlier year for that. Um, so those were just some of mine. Holly? Um, I can try to address some of those. I 
did not write them down fast enough. I didn't know it was going to be such a list, Mandy, um, Councillor Haneke, but I, um, so North Amherst Library, yes, was not budgeted um, for, uh, you know, maintenance costs, um, the additional costs with us assuming uh, responsibility for that portion of the building. That is a budgeted line item in FY25. Um, can't remember off the top of my head, but I believe it was pretty similar to what was um, expended in FY24. I think we budgeted around 13 to 15,000 possibly, which will likely not be enough to cover the expenditures at that building. Um, I know there was one on Cherry Hill golf carts. Cherry Hill golf carts, um, my understanding is, I believe it was three years ago, I believe we're right at the end of a three-year lease on new golf carts. The golf carts um, had been aging. We had had the same golf carts there for, you know, a, a lease after a lease after a lease. So they were aging and the um, the recommendation was made to get, um, you know, a brand new set of golf carts there for rental. I'm not sure if they changed the rental fees at that time or not to help cover the additional cost, but the cost that is budgeted for those is at, um, you know, a figure that it, it was, you know, 10 years ago when we were renting um, golf carts at a much lower um, annual cost. So that is something that just has not caught back up with the budgeting yet. Um, if you could prompt me which other questions, I'll do my best to answer. Um, I guess one of my biggest ones, because a lot of them were just observations, was the um, my observation on DPW that nearly all those expense lines were overspent. Um, is that a recurring issue or is that just a one time oddity for FY24? Um, I would have to look into that a little bit further. Um, there, the, the thing with DPW is that folks move around so much. They may be in the tree department this week. They they get a promotion. They move to a different department next week. And sometimes those um, th there is some crossover between the different um, departments within DPW. And we, we more or less treat DPW um, as one department budget wise at the end of the year, there are probably some things we could do to to make that a little better. Um, but I I'm not prepared to to respond um, with any detail to that one right now. Um, the biggest savings was in snow and ice um, for sure as we had a mild winter. Um, and I believe without snow and ice, it was not really over by that much. There was a savings. Um, in the construction maintenance line um, as well. So there were two departments that, that saved there. Um, and 100% um, agree, um, water and sewer enterprise funds have been struggling over the past several years. Um, it is something that when we set the rates uh, for the coming fiscal year that we are going to have to look at very closely. There are more capital needs um, that they are um, going to uh, be asking for that we need to make sure are covered in our rates. Um, you know, we do have an exercise that we go through to set the rates where we, we put in projected, all sorts of projected costs and projected debt costs mm -hmm. and upcoming projects and capital items. Um, we do the indirect cost and we estimate out what that is going to be. Um, the unfortunate reality is, um, you know, the water and sewer enterprise funds have very specialized equipment and processes and procedures and things that we need to follow. And the, the cost of all those things are, are just increasing Phenomenally. And the um, and although I believe our consumption rates are now coming back up, we are still sort of at a phase coming out of COVID when things were shut down and, and there were a lot of um, water conservation um, things done, you know, 
town wide, everybody is trying to conserve the water. Our our consumption was dropping. Our consumption dropped considerably during COVID with the colleges being closed and the businesses being closed, et cetera. We are now back up to what I believe to be normal consumption. So I think we can be a little bit more accurate with those going forward because I think some of those unknowns are are more known to us now that where our consumption is going to you know continue at this level and we know that our costs are going up at a at a much higher level so I think we can be a little bit more accurate with those in the coming year thanks thank you Bernie yeah um I, Kathy and I never had the the joy of going in and looking at how we uh, cost and price our our sewer charges and our water charges. We started that and sort of sort of went away. But that is an area that I think um, the town might be well advised to to bring in a consultant firm that specializes in these things because it's complicated. Um, and having an outside set of eyes looking at it. Um, in, in making recommendations might actually be helpful. Thanks. Any other comments? Okay, I think we're just, the only thing left on our agenda is uh, minutes, adoption of the October 1, 2024 meeting minutes and the November 8, 2024 meeting minutes. Marissa? So so I um I, I don't have the November ones ready. Okay, I thought so I would have October. them. Yep. This October. Yeah. Any okay, so yes. Yeah, so it's just the October one. Um anyone have any comments on those minutes? I look through them, they look okay to me. Okay. Um do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay, um, all right, we've had a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right, so we'll start a vote. I'll vote aye. Andy? Aye. Uh, uh, Councilor Walker? Yes. Kathy? Yes. Uh, Councilor Haneke? Aye. Bernie? Support. All right, it's unanimous, uh, and we'll do November 8 when we have it. Um, Next committee meeting is scheduled for next Friday at nine. I, I think we can, if everybody can make it, we'll do it two and, two and a half hours as well. Um, just plan for that. Um, and uh, I think at that point, we'll see if we need more meetings before um, the final vote on the guidelines. But hopefully we'll have a, a Councilor Haneke, uh, hopefully we'll have a, a, a guidelines document by then. Yeah, I'll, I'll have one for next week. Um, I had a comment as, as we're talking about next committee meetings. There was a bu budget calendar in last week's packet. Um, and we forgot last year that when we do the water and sewer rates, we also have to amend the regulations or the bylaw or something like that. And I wanna just make sure that the budget calendar includes that particular thing throughout any time the sewer and water regulations are met so that we don't forget that again. <laughs> I, I know it's kind of related to next committee meetings, but not particularly, but it was the best place to fit it. <laughs> really appreciate that reminder, Mandy. <laughs> And anyone else have any comments? Any items, uh, Holly? I just want to say thank you to everybody for the accolades on the fourth quarter report. It is um, a different report. It is still the same report you guys have gotten off for the fourth quarter of every year. It is still Sonia's, you know, sort of original um, format, just, you know, updated it. So thank you, but I'm giving the credit back to my predecessor. I just recreated her report. Uh, you did, Holly, but you also expanded and gave us some history, which was incredibly useful. So it, 
I realized I actually asked where was first, second, and third, and Paul said, "Give Holly a break. She's been working <laughs> <laughs> triple jobs for the past twelve months." So, thank you so much. Take the compliment, Holly. I am you, taking the compliment. Thank it. you very much, but it, it's really not me. I'm I just plugged numbers in there. <laughs> thank uh, you. True. It did take the mystery out of out of uh, the, the. It did help solve the free cash mystery, from which you do receive should get all kinds of faculties. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay, anyone uh, with items not anticipated by the chair 40 hours in advance? No? All right, so uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right, I'll vote aye, Andy. Aye. Kathy? Yes. Uh, uh, Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Haneke? Aye. Bernie? I, re recognizing the busy, busy town, I vote <laughs> aye. <laughs> well, enjoy your little town there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Thanks. Have a great weekend.